So last time we look at symmetries. Um, at the end, um, I actually made a few small mistakes because I was uh, moving pretty quickly. Um, for example, we which side you know in the when you had the axis of rotation, which side was um, our sine theta. But um, I uploaded all my notes to Blackboard, so you can see them over there. Um, I think we have seven lectures so far. So we derived from Hamilton's principle the conservation of um, linear momentum and the conservation of angular momentum in a way that was more general than uh, with Newtonian mechanics, with what we did before. And um, actually, it inherently <coughs> contained um, cases in which uh, Newton's third law doesn't hold. Right? So for example, when you have, um, in the case of uh, electric and magnetic fields, Can you see that color? It's a little light. So there's another one that we can derive, and um, this is important. So If a system is invariant to translation, you know, along a certain direction, then um, linear momentum is conserved in that direct along that direction. If the system is invariant to um, rotation, um, about an axis, then um, angular momentum is conserved. Um, mathematically, this was you know, the partial derivative of the Lagrangian with respect to um, Q, for example, X um, partial, uh, uh, the derivative with respect to time of this is zero. For the uh, angular momentum, it will be, I guess, R, a little nicer. Uh, partial derivative of the Lagrangian with respect to the angle theta, derivative with respect to time of this equals zero. So we have another conservation law that we often use in physics, conservation of momentum and conservation of energy. So in this case, we are going to consider only conservative fields, uh, conservative forces. So the potential is just a function of the position. Um, and generalized coordinates is just qj. The Lagrangian, you know, in general we have q1, um, 
of the Q's, QN, Q1 dot, all the Q dots, QN dot, and the time. So the, the total time derivative of the Lagrangian is going to be sum over all indices, partial derivative of the Lagrangian with respect to qj, dqj dt, this is just the chain rule, and then we have the same thing for the q dots dqj dot dt and then we have the time finally we know from um, Lagrange's equation that partial derivative of the Lagrangian with respect to qj is the derivative with respect to time of the partial derivative of the Lagrangian with respect to qj dot. So that means that we can uh, substitute this one over here. So it's going to be the derivative with respect to time of the partial derivative of the Lagrangian with respect to qj and then times that. So we just use the definition um, of the Lagrangian in there. And this one over here, dqj divided by dt is just um, um, qj dot, right? So now we can use uh, the product rule for the product rule we know that the derivative of u times v is u derivative of v plus v derivative of u U is going to be qj dot, so du is going to be derivative of qj dot with respect to time. dv is going to be the derivative with respect to time of the partial derivative of the Lagrangian with respect to qj dot and you know, we have u and dv so it's this expression over here um, we do the integral and v is going to be partial derivative of the Lagrangian with respect to qj dot So that means that <coughs> um, we can replace this stuff the derivative with respect to time of 
to the Lagrangian. Sum over all indices. Um, derivative with respect to time of um, qj dot partial derivative of the Lagrangian with respect to qj dot. So we have the two terms, udd and bdu. Um, u is qj dot, which is this one over here. Um, and du is this one over here. And dv is this one over here. ddt, partial derivative of the Lagrangian with respect to qj dot. And v is this one over here. So we had it, we had the equation in this form, so we can put it in this form. This is gonna be the derivative with respect to time of just u times v. <coughs> <coughs> so this one and this one. And of course, we still have the time. Okay, so just some um, mathematical manipulation. If we move um, this one, you know, this, this one is equal to zero. If we move it to the other side, um, we will get uh, sorry, this was not equal to zero, it was equal to um, total derivative of the um, Lagrangian with respect to time. So if this one, we move it to the other side, then we get zero. Qj dot. Um, we can distribute uh, this one over here. So it's going to be a derivative with respect to time. J dot partial derivative of the Lagrangian with respect to QJ dot. And this was the total derivative, so we can put it in the inside of the sum um, as Lagrangian uh, because the derivative is already here. Uh, plus partial derivative of the Lagrangian with respect to time. So now we're going to define H in this case is a uh, small h underscore. Um, as 
this term over here. J dot <coughs> what we have um, inside of this derivative. So you can see that H in general. A function of q1, qn, q1 dot, q and dot time. This um, equation is known as the energy function. pretty important. Chapter 8 is dedicated to it. Let me make sure that it's chapter 8. 